Well, the Conservative backbench Miriam Kate says the pressures on families don't get enough attention at Westminster and she wants policies put in place to support people raising children and indeed encourage them to have more children if they want to. Just before the Commons broke up for Easter, I popped over to Parliament and asked Miriam Cates if she's as enthusiastic about the Chancellor's plans for free childcare as he is. No, I'm afraid I'm not. If you look at all the polling and the research, what parents want is choice and flexibility. And that's a mixture of formal childcare, informal childcare, one parent choosing to stay at home for some hours a week, all those kind of things. So I really welcome the amount of money that's being invested into the early years. I think that's, uh, you know, very positive. But actually, there are much more flexible ways of doing it that would actually yield better results. But many women obviously want to go to work. They need to go to work for their own self-esteem for the family finances, to give them financial independence. Doesn't the state have a responsibility to do everything it can to facilitate that choice? Yes, exactly, to facilitate that choice. So again, if you look at the polling, I think it's something like two thirds of mothers of under fours would rather work fewer hours if they could afford to do so. So if we were looking at choice as the basis for a policy, you absolutely wouldn't pick this. You'd pick something like a voucher model where you gave every family you know, an amount of money to spend in the way they chose to do, which could be informal childcare, it could be paying granny, it could be taking it as cash so that you don't have to work as many hours. So this is not a pro-choice model. This is an institutional childcare model where you have to take those hours between nine and three on 38 set weeks of the year. That's not the flexibility that families want. And it's not what the polling says people want. I don't want to make this about me, but I'm a working dad. My wife's a working mum. We have to work, yeah. you know, to, to live in London. You know, what's going to help us is cheaper or free nursery care right now. Well, the problem is that over the last generation, it has become more and more impossible for a family to survive on one income. So that's the problem that we have here. The solution is to somehow either raise wages or reduce taxes or reduce the cost of living. There are many ways to do that. Why are we always looking to more free childcare as the only option? If you gave every family vouchers worth, let's say, five or £10,000 a year to do with how they saw fit, you would A, help people achieve their ambition to balance their family life in the way that they want to, and also you create a much healthier um, infrastructure of formal childcare, informal childcare, shift-based childcare, all those other things that actually a market-based system, which is what Conservatives would probably be arguing for, would actually deliver. We're talking about raising young children. You're worried about the birth rate, aren't you? Which uh, is falling in the UK. What evidence is there that economic circumstances are behind it? I mean, the birth rate's falling in other developed countries in Europe, in Japan, in South Korea. It could be that people are just making a choice not to have children. I think if you really dig into the data, it's clear that the vast majority of people do want to have children. 92% of young women say that they want to become mothers and on average they want 2.3 children, I think. And when women do have that first child, they generally go on to have a second or third. That what's changed over the last 30, 40 years is the number of women who never become mothers at all. I'm sure part of that is economic, but other cultural factors are mentioned as well. So not feeling like motherhood is valued. And I think that is a huge factor. And certainly in this country, it doesn't feel like family life and motherhood is it is valued as it should be. But this is a problem across the entire world. We need to wake up to what this is going to do to society. But people, people might, prospective parents who decide not to have children, might look at the state of the world, think about climate change, look at their own family finances and think there's no way I want to bring children into this world at the moment. That's a very valid choice, isn't it? And why should government have anything to say about that at all? Of course the government, no government, should be telling people to have children. It's absolutely, it's a very personal decision. But the government should be interested in the future of our economy. And that isn't just about, you know, free trade or looking at attracting investment. That is, do we have the people we need to sustain our economy? And of course, there's only one way that people come into the world. I think a lot of your colleagues here in Parliament, they worry it sends the wrong message. You're making a big stand on these sorts of big society issues, telling people in your own way, to breed and to, to help well, to, them, and to let the government yeah. and to encourage the government to help them. Do you have any qualms about the position that you're taking or concerns about how it, how it travels? Well, I, I think it's fair to say that I have been seriously misrepresented by a whole series of different media outlets. In fact, I was reading an article called Breed for Britain, which I have never said, but my name and face were at the top. Now, all I am saying is we should absolutely be removing the barriers that stop young people from having the children that they say they want. What is our job as MPs if it's not to speak up for the issues that are on the horizon? Just finally, you've become one of the most high-profile backbench 
MPs, you're a, one of the new Conservatives, you represent a red wall seat as well. The election is coming. Um, how, do you, how are you feeling as you head into this recess with the election around tired. the corner and potentially losing your own seat in a few months' time? Tired. Uh, looking forward to some chocolate. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm not going to pretend the polls are bad. It doesn't feel as desperate on the doorstep. But yeah, I mean, look, it's hard work at the moment and certainly people are, are despondent in, in some ways. But, you know, the government can still push back into the kind of policies, the kind of agenda that won us that incredible majority in 2019. You know, this kind of patriotic a kind of conservatism. So policy platform could be still decisive. Miriam Cates.